This is the Chameleon Antenna's Impass 2.0. Impass stands for Modular Portable Antenna System. It is a six-in-one antenna. You can do a couple of vertical configurations, an inverted V, an inverted L, a sloper, and one or two other options. Well, we're gonna take a look at it right now. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews news and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. This antenna has been out for a while. I've had it in my possession for a while, but it's such a complex antenna, I wanted to do it justice by being able to set the antenna up in all six configurations and put it on video so that I could show it to everybody. So today we're gonna take a look at this. It's going to be a, it's a very versatile antenna system. If you are in an area where you need a vertical, it'll do that. If you're in an area where you can set up an infed uh, sloper or you can set up a, a inverted V or inverted L, different configurations and whatnot, this will do all of that. It comes with this really nice bag, which for future videos, I'm actually gonna take this bag. This bag, the antenna itself, the Impass 2.0 antenna itself, barely fills this bag. It feels like 10, maybe 15% of this bag. So there's a lot of extra room in this bag after this antenna, after this specific antenna, which the bag comes with. So I'm gonna take this bag and I'm gonna put all my antennas in it. I'm gonna make it my official Parks on the Air backpack and just fill it full of antennas. And of course the Impass 2.0 will be one of those antennas. And I'm looking forward to doing some Parks on the Air activations. So let's take a look at the configurations of this antenna right now. All right, included in the uh, configuration, uh, the pieces of the antenna is this, what they call a hybrid micro. This has got an SO239 on it right here. This can go into a base or it can be a standalone. It can take a whip in the top. This is your mount point, the mounting base, which is driven into the ground with this tip right here and can take either this hybrid micro or maybe one of the extension poles and this is ABR Coax. I've talked about ABR Coax before. This is a, a company out of Texas that makes great quality coax. You can usually tell because they have these green uh, heat shrinks on, its, on their antenna similars. But this comes with the Impass 2.0 antenna. So you don't have to buy extra antenna, extra coax. It comes with it. It looks like it's a mil-spec RG58 and is made by ABR so you know you're getting quality stuff. This is the antenna wire and the extension uh, cable that comes with it. So depending on which configuration you're gonna use, you'll use one, of, one or both of these in different areas. This is what they call the whip antenna base. This is what they call the whip antenna extension or the, the top of the antenna. And of course, this is the bag. This is the really great backpack. You can see it's, it's as tall as I am. I did an Instagram picture that I'll overlay here, but uh, <laughs> it's a really big bag. It needs to be really long. To hold the uh, to hold all the the extension whips and the antenna base and the the mounts in that that you're driving to the ground, which are all kind of long, but um, this is the longest piece right here. This antenna base is the longest piece, so it has to be long enough to hold that. But that's the um, that's the bag, and it's a really quality material. You know, I'm kind of a bag geek, and I geeked out about this bag, and like I said, I'm going to use it for my multiple antenna pack. So let's take a look at a couple of configurations. All right, this is the man pack portable version of the antenna. Basically, instead of driving the stake into the ground that holds the hybrid micro, you use the bag to hold it. I guess this would be useful in situations if you're in a rocky uh, environment and you can't drive the stake into the ground. Maybe if, you're, uh, maybe if you're on concrete, if you're set up in a parking lot somewhere, this might be useful. You're gonna have to make sure the pack is weighted down, which I don't have it weighted right now. That's why it's kind of sideways. <laughs> There's nothing in the pack right now. So in order to get it to actually mount the antenna and hold it correctly, you're gonna have to weight the pack down somehow. But at least that's an option. You'll notice that the, uh, the antenna whip is on the top of it right now, but the antenna extension is not. According to the instructions, the extension is not used in this configuration. So this can be used in other configurations. There's six different configurations to set this antenna up in. And I'm guessing you could probably set it up in other configurations that's not listed in the manual, but we're gonna go through the six in the manual today, and this is number one. After the man pack vertical, this is the, what I'd call standard vertical. 
This is this use this uses the stake that comes with the kit to drive into the ground. This is much better, much more stable, better for parks in the air configuration, better for being on the beach like we are right now. And you add the antenna extension base to the bottom of it and it goes up higher, so it's a taller vertical antenna. For whatever reason, in the man pack portable version of the antenna in the instruction manual, it says just to use the whip and not the extension base. Okay, that's fine, no problem at all. But in this version, which is obviously more stable because it's drilled into the ground, we're gonna use the entire antenna. This is the version that I used last time I was in Galveston. I hooked this antenna in this configuration to my IC705 and made several DX contacts over FT8. So it works very well, it's easy to set up, and it doesn't take up much room. The next option, option number three, is the Invis horizontal configuration. Invis is near vertical incident skywave. You can read more about that online. It's basically a way to set up a horizontal antenna to make contacts that are closer to you. It's great to use in a CUSO party if you're trying to contact other counties in your own state. We've used it on the Texas CUSO party a few times with a different antenna. But this is the Invis configuration. Basically, you take the hybrid micro and you put it at the top of this mast. It needs to be 10 to 12 feet tall off the ground according to the manual and then you run the wire the the main antenna wire instead of the counterpoise you may run the main antenna wire out horizontally pretty much all the way as it'll go it's got white rings on the ends of both wires so you can kind of hook it over a mast so you'd need a second mast to set this one up let me walk over here and show you what i've got done right now i don't have a second mast with me today but i'm going to kind of hold it out for you and see what you see what you uh see what it looks like here so you would wind this all the way out and hang this up in another mast at the end of this antenna wire the manual doesn't uh, doesn't really give the length for how far this goes out but it does show it to be pretty much all the way out to the end of the uh, white ring terminal on the end of the wire so you could hang this up you could probably do it for different configurations what I would do is put it on a meter put it on your analyzer and depending on what band you're working, you might want to string it out for 17 or 20 meters or, or 40 meters or even up to 80 meters. You string it all the way out for 80 meters, I suspect. But put it on your antenna analyzer, string it out 10 feet at, the, at each end, and then you've got an invis antenna. So the next configuration is the sloper configuration. I've taken the mast off of the antenna once again. There's the uh, stake in the ground. And what it d says to do by the way, this is 73 feet of wire. I mentioned earlier all the way out, 73 feet of wire, I'll put an overlay, should have seen that by now. But basically you take the hybrid micro, attach it to the base in the ground, and then you run this all the way out. I think it says run this about 48 feet out, uh, refer to the manual here, and set this about 25 to 40 feet in the air. So you're gonna need another mast to set it up that high to get it up in a sloper configuration. And then, and then the antenna will basically be like this, and whichever direction this is pointed is basically the direction it's radiating. So you can kind of point it north or point it west or whatever you want to do. It's still omnidirectional technically, but it kind of prefers to go in the direction that it slopes to. We ran an, a sloper antenna from Costa Rica and sloped it uh, up, down, and pointed it kind of where the slope was pointing north back towards the United States so we could easily easier contact station in the United States to work FT8 from our flex radio that's down there. So sloper antenna configurations work great. Used it a lot in Costa Rica and it's a really good addition to this uh, Impasse 2.0 kit. The next configuration is the inverted L. So it basically looks like this. It goes straight up out of the micro, out of the uh, hybrid micro. It goes up about 25 feet and it goes straight over. So you've got a vertical coming up out of the hybrid micro and a horizontal wire and it's all done with the same wire. So you take this same wire here, and once again, you have to have an extra mast. You take this movable white connector or white ringlet piece, get yourself a 25 foot mast to go probably right next to it, maybe even uh, thread into the top of the hybrid micro. Put this up at the 25 foot mast, 25 foot up vertically to a 48 or 50 foot horizontal antenna to form an inverted L. The last one, and this is probably going to be my favorite configuration for this antenna. Instead of using an L, you basically just drop the end 
uh, instead of running the top piece totally horizontal, you drop the end down to where this part forms the apex of the V and you run it as an inverted V antenna. You'd have to have something in the center holding this up, but now you don't have to have a mast at the hybrid micro, micro itself. You can run that on the ground, run your portable push-up pole or some kind of uh, portable mast that you carry around, run it at about 25 feet up, hook this ringlet around it in the middle, and then bring this one back down to the ground and tie it off with paracord. Very similar to the way we did the pac tenna when we were operating on the beach. K at MRD and myself did some beach activations with the uh, infed halfway from pac tenna and we ran it as an inverted V. The infetted V is a very common configuration. It's versatile, it's basically, it's basically bi-directional uh, off, of off of either side of the antenna, but it's really omnidirectional. You can still work, uh, if, you, if you've got your V hanging like this, you can still work stations like this as well as like this. So it's, it's just a very common way to hang a dipole antenna. It works very well, uh, very reliable, and that is probably the way I'm going to run this antenna when I set it up at my next park activation. So that is the Chameleon Impasse 2.0 backpack modular antenna system, modular portable antenna system. Six different configurations all lined out in the manual. See the screenshots that uh, were throughout this video, they were all taken from the manual. I'll put a link to the PDF file from the manual in this description below. This is a very versatile antenna. It's a little bit heavy for you soda guys. You may not, you may not want to work something this heavy um, if you're backpacking up a mountain and you're trying to be concerned about a lightweight pack, but it is perfect for parks on the air. It's perfect for field day. It's perfect for portable operations where you're not necessarily worried about weight. It's not really, really heavy, but it's gonna be heavier than like say a pack tenna or just an infed halfway wire or just some kind of random wire that you're taking up there to pack as light as you want to. But this one will give you a vertical configuration. You can do invis, you can do inverted L, inverted V. You can uh, mount it to the backpack so that you don't have to drill it into the ground or you can uh, stake it into the ground with the supplied stake that comes with the antenna. It's um, very easy to put together, and from what I've from the I've only used it to date. At the time of this recording, I've only used it in the vertical configuration. And like I said, made several DX contacts with the 705 on FT8. I think it was 20 meters. So I'm only running 10 watts, and I'm in the Gal I'm in Galveston running 10 watts on this antenna vertically, and I'm making DX contacts. So there's nothing in the world wrong with that. So let me know if you have this antenna. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you have a different configuration for it other than the six configurations listed in the manual. Put your comments below. We'll catch you next time. Oh, there's probably wind in the microphone now.